actually think the last objection you made is um, quite fascinating. And it's something I have worried about a great deal about whether Sellers is, and so uh, I've been, and sort of there's a way in which you can sort of read, um, this is something I've worried about a lot, actually. I've, I've never published on this. I don't know if I, ever, if I will, but like there's a way in which you can sort of worry that the example, I suppose this way, certainly this much is true. The example depends upon um, a very strong realism, a very strong determinacy um, about the world. Like the world just sort of comes up pre-carved into individuated objects, the robot just sort of det detects. Um, certainly the thought experiment um, is pointed us in that direction and you're totally right, that would be a huge problem if it were. Um, I think that taking the thought much more seriously and really pursuing it further, taking the thought experiment further than Sellers himself does, would really involve bringing into play observations from Uxkul and perhaps Gibson that what counts as real for an organism, it, the, the robot's manifest image is going to be, might be, you know, what is, it might be radically different from our manifest image because its sensory apparatus is different and the kinds of patterns it can detect. And so how the robot, um, the kinds of individuations that the robot can detect and classify might be radically different from ours. Um, right, sort of, he, he has to smuggle a lot in by calling the rope, by, by the robots, um, making it an anthropoid robot. And I think there's interesting, really interesting questions about how far we could go with this kind of example, if we had made it sort of way more realistic, like if we had sort of Bill was sort of thinking about, well, you know, if we sort of read some Uxco into Sellers, or if we read, you know, some some of the late Mulaponti into Sellers, how what happens then? I think this we might get we might end up getting a certainly a much more complicated story. I mean, you're look, almost at this point, like certainly Sellers has made things too easy for himself. That much I entirely agree with. That's not to say there might not be a way of sort of thinking with sellers beyond sellers on this particular point where he might say, well, so, you know, even if the robot is equipped with, you know, but let's just say we're talking with say, you know, when we get out, we finally get ourselves out into space and we encounter um, aliens who picture in ways that are very different how we picture our ability to communicate with them will depend upon our ability to recognize similarities between how they picture and how we do. If the differences between how they picture and how we picture are simple, are too, if the differences are too great, then no communication will be possible. But I think that's, that's fine, right? It's communication presupposes similarity in picturing. And if the difference in pic if picturing is too great, then communication is not possible. But I think that's, that might be a somewhat pessimistic, but I think that's, I think Sellers along with Davidson would have to accept them, something like that. Um, the only thing I wanna say is in response to the first point um, about um, how do we get from, how do we get, I think the first point is like, how do we get from picturing to signifying? Well, this is one, this again, I think this is in a way an easier question for a Solarsian to handle. Namely, you just need something like, a, you just need some sort of story about the evolution of language. It's some sort of story about how pragmatics of animal communication were harnessed to the semantics of thought. And Sonoros has no story, it doesn't say anything about that, but I think he, that's, that's really all he needs to address that second, that, that point though. Also, I mean, I, I, should, I, say, I, should, I think that we also might want to pose questions here about whether the isomorphism is really um, a necessary part of the story or whether we might need, um, say, many to many mappings or maybe we need partial mappings. I mean, I think a lot of sellers, you know, sellers are much of philosophers own time. 
and his commitment to isomorphism comes very much out of understanding, well, uh, sort of how to think about the logic relations as codified by set theory. Um, and we might have other ways of thinking about those given more, more recent tools in mathematics or in cognitive science. <laughs>